Oh my god, I get to talk to him. Hey there everybody and anybody, and welcome back to Outer Wilds. Uh, in this video, we are going to make our way to the Ember Twin to go to the Gravity can can Canyon. Canyon. Uh, so we can um, figure out what's going on on the... Um, uh, on that... Uh, the... the Asteroid, whatever the asteroid's called. Interloper, that's what it is. Uh, and then we'll probably do a couple more things. Uh, we need to still get some more stuff going with the Sunless City, as well as the Lake Bed Cove. Uh, and we also will need to go. I don't know if we'll do it this episode or not. Depends how fast everything else goes. We also need to go to the... Uh, the vessel, the, uh, yeah, in, uh, Dark Brambles, so we can input that code. Let's see if I can, oh, there it is. Okay. Call shuttle home. Activate. Okay. Ow. Ow. I fear our situation may be dire. Pi, Poke, and I have la landed here on the comet not long after its arrival in the star system. Our shuttle's equipment heard strange energy re readings coming from somewhere beneath the surface. Pi and Poke were able to locate a fissure in the ice in the comet's sunward side, and they descended inside to investigate the source of the readings. But Pi and my sister have been gone for a long time now. They haven't contacted me since descending below the surface either. Should I leave the shuttle to look for them? I want to follow protocol, but I don't know what I'll do if they aren't well. Okay, Pi, come back to me safely, my friends. Ooh, shit. Okay. Super cool. What are you? That's not, that's, oh, that's gonna hurt. Oh, shit. Oh, that, well, that didn't work out as well as I hoped. the sun Fissure. Ah, that's why you need to go by the sun so it'll melt. To the left, to the left. Receiving much stronger energy readings now that we're beneath the crust. Whatever it is, it must lie somewhere below, closer to the comet's center. I'm starting to think it's more dangerous than we realized. Clary, can you hear us? Yes, but your voices are faint. I fear we'll lose communication entirely if you continue any deeper. 
Keep the shuttle warm for us, Clary. We'll return the moment we identify the source of the energy readings. I understand, but be cautious, both of you. Okay. Whew. Don't die, don't die, don't die, I'm good. Whoa, ship log updated. At least I updated it. Yeesh. like another place to go through like right there, right? What's this? Ooh. Okay, we got ourselves another another place to go. Danger. Oh, Jesus. Spherical stone casing here seems to be the source of what's within. Oh wait, it seems to be the source of the energy readings. No, no, rather the source is what's within the stone. I'm detecting some form of exotic matter. The stone is muting our energy readings. They should be in, be ten times what we're seeing at least. Pi, I don't think we want this matter interacting with us. As far as I can tell, direct contact with it would be most certainly fatal never encountered anything like this Com uh, casing, but it's all that's protecting us from what's inside. We're still, the matter is disturbingly volatile. Pi, whatever the uh, matter inside the stone casing is, it's more than just profoundly unstable. It's undertones of pressure. Oh, under tons of, of pressure. Uh, look at this density scan. I've never seen anything like anything this tightly compacted before. What is this? This is orders of magnitude worse than I imagined. If the stone were to rupture, the lethal matter within would rapidly expand, completely blanketing the star system almost... Ah, this is all the ghost matter. Um, almost instantaneously, and the pressure is building as the comet approaches the sun. Return to the shuttle right now. The rest of our friends need to know they're in terrible danger. Leave your equipment and run. What are you doing, Pi? 
The more we know about this alien matter, the better our chances of survival. I will learn what I can here. Go warn the others. Maybe they can construct shelter somehow. Now, Poke. I killed herself trying to figure out this awesome ghost matter. We probably are done with the interloper anyway. Alright, let's see if there's anything else that we're supposed to do on the on the interloper. I don't think so, but let's figure that out. Oh, interloper is done. You son of a bitch! I found you again. How do I land on you? And I was there because of you. No! Oh my god, I landed on it. Oh my god, I landed on it. Oh my god, that's it. We're here. Oh my god, we're here. Nuts. Recall the rule of the sixth location. If you recall the rule of quantum, you have recalled the rule of quantum imaging. Recall the rule of quantum uh, entanglements. too far because I think that I could lose the moon and my ship. Visitors always arrive on the south pole. So I'm on the south pole. Let's be on the moon's north pole. Let's go to the North Pole. Hmm. 
No! To the moon again. I wasn't thinking of uh, what I need to do, so. You can be on the moon and you can move it if you turn off the lights, right? So I'm thinking, we go to the tower. It's gotta be on the north and you always, you're always on the south. Here's the tower shard. Grove shard. Unknown. Oh, Jesus, son. Ah! So I'm definitely on the North Pole. I'm gonna go in. I'm gonna shut this. Turn off the lights. Now we're here. Oh, cool! I like, I like how they, I like how they did the quantum moon. It's fucking badass. Where am I now? Uh, Bramble, I'm thinking. Kind of, kind of freaks me out a little bit. This is. Is this the black hole? Or... What? So we're back here. Whoa! Ho -ho. So I'm at the North Pole, and, you know, now that that's there, maybe you just gotta walk around. Oh, I'm still on the North Pole. Oh my god, I get to talk to him. Uh, whoa. It's a Nomai that's not dead. I am Solanum, a Nomai. My clan arrived in the star system before my birth, and now we call it home. Okay, this is fucking awesome. We are orbiting the eye of the universe now. Although we cannot see it, only the quantum moon's reflection of it. The eye is older than the universe itself, and my clan believes it dwells in the extremely distant orbit around the star system. This is the quantum moon, where we are both standing. Despite also orbiting the other celestial bodies, the quantum moon is the eye of the universe's moon. 
I've never met one of your kind before. It's an honor to speak with you. I particularly admire your four eyes. There are many questions I would ask if I could comprehend your language. You have my gratitude for understanding mine. Imagine your purpose here is the same as mine, to learn about and to find the eye of the universe. I am on my first pilgrimage to the quantum moon. All Nomai and my clan have made this journey when we come of age. Even though the eye cannot be reached from here, the quantum moon remains special to us, as it carries us near the eye, nearer to the eye than any place we know. Have you encountered a quantum shard on another planet? The shards look the same as the quantum moon surface does now, while well, at the eye. From this, we can reasonably infer the quantum moon's natural state as we see it now, and that the eye is its primary location. Given the quantum moon is the eye's moon, it is likely that any characteristics the moon exhibits are also exhibited by the eye itself. The quantum moon and its shards, for instance, are quantum. Thus, the eye is likely also quantum. There is fundamental uncertainty through the, throughout the universe. Normally, this uncertainty is only observable on the very on a very bleh, on a very small scale. As one approaches the eye, however, that uncertainty grows enormously. The quantum moon probably exhibits macroscopic quantum behavior because of its proximity to the eye. Shards that broke off from the quantum moon have a similar effect, as I imagine you've seen elsewhere in the star system. Conscious observation forces the quantum object to collapse into a single possibility. But what would happen if a conscious observer somehow entered the eye itself? Over time, this has become my claim's greatest question. Okay, remove Eye of the Universe, me. I suppose you could reach the Eye of the Universe. Would you try to enter it? What do you imagine the effects of a conscious observer might be? We do not have much of a connection, you and I. Still, this encounter feels special. I hope you won't mind if I think of you as a friend. Many in my clan believe the Eye uh, called to us for a particular purpose. When I was a child, I used to believe this Eye was malef malevolent. To have lured my clan to the star system only to then vanish from them co so completely. Like many of my clan before me, I journeyed here to, the, to see the quantum moon's reflection of the eye. This is the closest any of us have come to seeing the eye itself. You may think I'm strange, but I have a hypothesis that I may not be entirely alive. Perhaps my journey has reached its end. This is your first time on the quantum moon? It's my first time here. If you've come here looking for answers, I hope you find them. I imagine if you notice the quantum moon changes in its appearance depending on which location it's currently at orbiting. For instance, the moon looks quite different when orbiting Giant Steep than it does when orbiting the Hourglass Twins. Because the quantum moon clearly changes in its different forms, the eye, being this moon's primary location, must be similarly malleable. From this, we can hypothesize that the eye represents extreme changeability. There are two tenets of Nomai philosophy. To seek out and to understand is our way of living. Alright, I don't think there's much more that I can do here. So, we have gone and met ourselves a real-life Nomai. I think that's going to be it for this episode of Outer Wilds. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. And I will see you guys in the next one. Later.